welcome to the walkthrough for the Cloud Animator Beta Service. So today I'm going to give you a quick introduction on some of the tools that we have for the beta service. So what do we do with this uh, Cloud Animator? Basically we can create animated projects and these projects consist of slides basically what we call scenes. These are animated scenes like this which have beautiful animations that are already pre-made and you can take advantage of these. So this may this might look a bit complicated when you look at this, like, oh, this color is coming in, this looks so cool, but how can I actually do it? So the, the good part, part about this is that you don't have to do this. You can use one of the pre-made templates and then you can take them apart and you can customize them any which way you like. And without doing, uh, uh, putting in a lot of time and effort, you can add in your own uh, text, your own images, <clears throat> and you can take advantage of all these animations that were created for you. So that's the beauty of these projects. And these projects are made with different scenes. For example, this one. So besides having these scenes in here, you can also rearrange them, you can create new ones, and you can have these scenes interact with each other. So what do I mean with that? For example, you see this, this image here of this uh, GIF? This is just an icon, but it has an embedded call to action. If I select it and I go up here to the image settings to link, you'll notice that the scene command is activated and it has go to scene 3. So, which means that when I'm running this on a preview or a full screen mode and somebody clicks on that gift, it will automatically jump to scene three, which is this one, which says option A. Likewise, if I click on this other one, it'll jump to scene five. So scene five in the project. And then the last one will go to scene seven. All right, so that's pretty cool because you can have return buttons. You can have a button that says go back to home. It'll bring you back to the very first uh, scene. And that way, you can create very cool interactivity between these uh, scenes and inside this project. So you can use some of these pre-made projects, or you can also create your own um, from uh, different scenes. So we have another folder here that says scenes. We have um, card gifts, the one you, you just saw right now, invitations. So I can grab one of these, let's say cover two, and I can insert it into my project. And then I can bring this up. I have that ability to individually select one, bring it up. And now that will be my intro to my project. Okay, so it's very easy, very, very simple. Great, so we covered uh, the projects. You know what these are, they're composed of different scenes. Then we have individual scenes in here. You can choose one of many, okay. Um, and now what I want to do is that I want to show you how to customize one of these animated scenes, a particular scene. So let me open a new project, completely new project, and I will use one of the pre-made scenes that we have here. So I'm going to go to scenes and which folder? Let's go to quiz. Result one. Now I really like this one because it's got some really cool animations. All right, let me stop this right about here. So I can start customizing this. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of these assets. Okay, these boxes and these text. Hold up, hold up, that one. Okay, and I see this home one. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I will bring in a new icon. I can do this. I'm gonna bring a new icon. I'm gonna go into shapes. And then we have a lot of shapes here. Uh, we have arrows. We have callouts or speech bubbles. We also have clip art. Um, so take notice that a lot of these icons, some of them come with outlines, which means that they're transparent, like this one here, okay? And other ones have more solid, uh, they're more solid icons. And I will show you one of those right in here, okay? So I see this location one. I like that. I wish to replace that home icon I had with this one. So I can stretch this out and because I'm working with a vector file I will not have any type of resolution quality drop and that's one of the big advantages of working with vectors. And I'm gonna drop this in like that. I think that should look okay, right? I like it. Okay, so when you're working with these vector files you can, you can actually color them. So select one and just go down to the fill color and I can choose a specific color like that. Okay, 
So yeah, very, very handy, very quick. So let me choose one more uh, icon here, another vector. I'm going to go to clip art, and I like the city one. So let me place this here. I want to get rid of this text, though. Delete. And this city looks pretty cool. I like it. Um, and I want to bring it to the back, and I want to drop the opacity. So we can do this. Just go up here to the image settings, transform, I'm sorry. Drop the opacity. Make it blend in. And then up here, you'll see that we have options to bring forward one step, send backwards, bring it completely to the front, or send it back. So let's go backwards, back, 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 back again, back again, and that's too much. Let's bring it forward once, and that should look good. Okay, so what about this rectangle? Let me bring this down a bit, like that. And I want to get rid of this. Um, I want to replace this, this image we have here. Remember this one? So I could replace this with a photo. So I'm going to go into, not the shapes, but I'm going to go into the image folder. And inside you'll notice that we have tons of assets for you to use. We have solid colors with gradients. We have more icons. We have color logos. These are very, very practical. And we also have uh, photo objects like this photo frame, which I will be using later on. But right now I want to use this photo 5. And I, because I have this one selected in the background, and I click on this, it'll replace it automatically. Okay, so what happens when I play this project back? Look at that. So that looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to have my city come in. All right, now that is very nice. And this is one of the advantages of using some of these pre-made projects and pre-made scenes. You do not have to spend a lot of time and effort in recreating all this, all these animations. You can simply grab one, customize, and do what you like. So one more thing I want to show you for this particular scene, I want to add some text, okay? So I'm going to grab my text here, and I'm going to type in New York City. And I can increase. I could. Um, I could expand. I could. Uh, I could increase the size of this font in two ways. One, I can go up here to font settings, and I can do it with a, with a value, or I can do it another way. I can just grab one of these corners, and I could do that with it. It's a lot. I prefer this way because it gives me a lot more control. Okay, uh, drop that line spacing. That looks pretty cool. I can also change the font if I'd like. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Let's see, what else can we use? We could use New York City like that. Yeah, that could look good. What about that one? Well, you can choose whichever one you feel comfortable with. I think I would like that one. Or let's give something, let's use something more artistic. Let's see. I like that. And the same way we did with the skyline. I wish to change the color and maybe drop the opacity a bit. So I will go to, uh, I'm, I selected the text, yes, I'll go here, and I will make this white, okay, and then I'm going to go back into these other settings, and I will drop the opacity a bit. Now that looks very cool, very artistic. So look at that. How long did it take us to do this? I didn't have to spend a lot of time um, with this project. I just took advantage of some of these pre-made scenes, some of these pre-made animations, and in no time at all, I created something that looks very, very cool and very professional. Okay? Get my icon in there. So obviously I could play around with uh, the animations and I can keyframe when I want the text to come in, when I want this button to appear. Um, we will be covering this in, for, in, in future tutorials in depth. We're going to show you how to use the timeline and everything. But right now I just want to give you a quick overview of um, some of the tools that we have here. So we have our scene. Another thing that we could do is that we can add background music. So if, if I go to background music, I can use any of these files that come in the, you can find in the server already, like this one here. That's pretty cool. I like that for New York. Or a brand new vision. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, like you're waking up. So we can use either of those, and you just have to click on it, and it will be embedded into my project. Let me get rid of this first one here. Uh, first scene, and delete that. So if I play my project back, you will hear that background music that's been embedded inside. And obviously, I can customize this. I can customize this by going down to the background music settings. And here's my, my track, Brand New Vision. I can choose if I only wish to play once or if I want to loop and if I wish to drop the volume a bit. Okay? So besides doing this, you can also upload your own tracks. And we're going to talk about that in other tutorials. So background music, we also have sound clips. So you could use very short sound clips like this one and you could keyframe them in the timeline so you can have these um, these particular sound clips pop up at specific time intervals and that can make your your, your project a lot more engaging okay so uh, lastly I want to create one last project and I want to show you how to uh, continue using some of these pre-made assets and how you can bring in a video yes we can do that with videos too so let's go here to, let's say, background images. I'm going to go to color. So we have background images for gradients. We have background images for pictures. So the difference with a, between a background image, uh, a background image and uh, an image per se is that I will not be able to animate this background. It's, it's stuck to the background. I cannot interact with it. I can't, um, you know, move it around or anything. Uh, and I, but I can do that if I chose one of the images from this folder here. So that's one thing to, to keep in mind. Um, so let's add that frame. I was talking about frames before. And let's look for it. I think we have that in pictures. Nope. Photos. There we go. This frame. This is a photo object. Let's click on it and we bring it in. And let's try to scale this a bit. And that looks very cool. Okay. So what about that video I keep on talking about? <laughs> All right, so let's go down here to video. I can create video and I can use a video URL. So I've got a video here that I like, one that I found from YouTube. A very cool New York video and I wanna run it from second probably 20 to second 40. So let me copy this URL. Let me load it first. And this will bring my video in, and it'll automatically create a preview. Shame. Oh, that's kind of high. Let's bring it down a bit. All right. So for the time here, I wish to start at second 20 and then end at second 40. So one little tip. Always put the last range first, okay? That way you can expand um, that, 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 that time range you're going to have. So second for, uh, from 20 to 40. All right, so that should be good. And let's apply. So now we have our video here, and I wish to just scale it down a bit, make it fit inside that frame. I think that should be okay, something like that. And obviously I want the frame to be on top. So let me bring this video backwards once, and that should run great. Let me play this back. First video on things to do here in New York City. Depending on how this goes, I'll do more, and I'll focus on neighborhoods, uh, entertainment, shopping. Now that is very nice. All right, so one last thing I want to show you, that besides um, besides having to upload your own, um, your own audio file, your own music, or your own uh, sound clips, you can actually use a text-to-speech engine that we have uh, with the service. So we have a lot of languages. We have English, Spanish, we have Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, French, German, Italian, Kurdish, Russian, and there's a whole bunch of them. So actually, the, the, the text-to-speech that we have is very, very good. You can go into something like Spanish here, and let's type in something. Oh, I have it already. Buenos dias, eh, Nueva York. Let's try New York. Let's see if she can pronounce New York properly. So, buenos dias, New York. Let's try it. Buenos dias, New York. Okay, that's good enough. It'll do. It'll do. So you could use this option also to generate your own sound clips without the need of having to upload your own. 
Okay, so it's a nifty little uh, feature that we have. All right, so this is it. This is it for the walkthrough, uh, the first walkthrough for the Cloud Animator beta service. We hope you find this tutorial very informative and uh, stick around because we're going to have a lot more tutorials on advanced stuff, how to do customizations for, with the animations, how to do keyframings, and all that good stuff. So thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye.